Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, my name is Laurie Plyler. I'm here with Carolina Lux team and just wanted to share some thoughts with you guys today. Some Q&A, frequently asked questions that we get a lot. So let's go ahead and dig right into it. One of the biggest questions that we've been getting lately is should I wait to sell or buy or is now the time? So should I sell now or should I sell a year from now? Should I buy now? Should I buy a year from now? So let's talk about this from both perspectives. So let's start with sellers. If you are considering the possibility of listing your home, selling your home, and you're wondering when the perfect timing is and when the smartest time is, here's the simplest answer to your question. Should I wait? Should I wait and let the market keep going up to get the best top dollar for my home? Short answer, no. No, you should not. Why is that? Well, here's the easiest thing to explain when you're looking at real estate and the way the market is right now. First of all, it is impossible to predict where the market's gonna be a year from now, for example. So if you're thinking, well, maybe I should sell in six months, maybe I should sell this time next year. Sure, you could wait to do that, but you really cannot guarantee where the market is going to be then. So you're taking a big gamble, um, not really being able to know or guarantee if you're gonna have the same value, more value, less value if you wait. So that is the first thing to just keep in mind is that waiting does not always guarantee you more equity. Um, and the circumstances that we're in right now is that the market currently is at the highest home values that people are seeing for their homes like ever right now. So think about that right now, your home is probably in most situations valued more right now than it ever has been before. And so could you wait? Sure. Could it be valued more later? Yes, possibly. Who knows, right? We can't predict the future. But right now, if you consider selling, you are positioning yourself to be selling your home for the best possible price that it ever has been able to sell for. And isn't that amazing to think about? Um, it is something to consider from a seller's perspective that it is likely part of why home values are so high right now is because there's low inventory and high demand, right? Supply versus demand. High demand with low supply drives prices up pretty much in any market, like in any industry, not just housing, right? Um, and it is likely that as inventory starts to level out, meaning we start to get more inventory to come to the market to su support the demand, that you are going to see prices begin to level out, slow down, or start to go down slightly just because simple fact, buyers are going to have more homes to choose from to purchase. Um, the biggest causes that's going to help the inventory start catching up with demand is two things. Number one, new construction. Of course, um, new construction takes time to catch up with supply and we are probably going to be, you know, generally in a high demand, low supply situation, probably into 2023, but it is going to inch up and catch up gradually over time, right? It's not just going to be like magically 2023, bam, here's a bunch of houses. So new construction is going to supply more inventory, which is going to affect housing prices and support that demand. And then the other thing to keep in mind is we are coming up in August on the end of forbearance that a lot of people took advantage of with mortgage forbearance during the pandemic. And those forbearance uh, forgiveness and periods are going to be coming to an end, which means people, people are not necessarily probably going to be looking at foreclosures. Like we're not probably going to be looking at like mass amounts of foreclosures uh, because a lot of people have strong equity in their home, but you will probably see a lot of homes go to the market because the forbearance ended and those homeowners would um, choose to go ahead and sell while equity is high rather than trying to catch up on those payments, so on and so forth. So new construction and forbearance are going to be the two biggest things that are going to bring a lot of inventory or more inventory to the market in the next coming months, which could affect home prices. So if you're even thinking now versus fall 2021, like I said, you can't predict the future, but my personal opinion is you're likely to probably get the best price for your home if you choose to sell now. So overall, the way the market is now in general is projected to continue through 2023. You're not going to see any drastic swing in the pendulum or change, but that's the general uh, thoughts about selling. So is it a great time to sell? Heck 
Yes, it is. Heck yes. Okay, now let's talk to buyers. Are you a buyer? Are you thinking about buying? Are you, uh, you know, I feel like we've seen it all right now with buyers. There's some people who are like, man, we're so excited. And they're just out there making their purchases and, you know, finding the house for them. There's other people that are like, I don't want to overpay. And they're worried about overpaying in this market. There's other people that are thinking like, I want to purchase, but let me sit it out for this amount of time. Um, and there's other people who are just overwhelmed by the whole situation. And I get it in all those situations. So let's just talk about that. So if you are considering buying or you you have plans to in the near future, there's some things to think about. One of the biggest questions we get right now for buyers is, am I overpaying? Am I overpaying part A and part B? Is there going to be a housing bubble that's going to pop? Am I purchasing in a housing bubble? Things are going to pop and I'm going to be SOL. That's not somewhere any of us want to be. Am I overpaying? Easy answer to both of those questions. Again, no. Yay. Aren't these great answers? No, you shouldn't wait to sell. And no, you're not going to be overpaying or purchasing during a housing bubble. And let's talk about why. First of all, we need to talk about overpaying because this concept of overpaying is something that honestly is not good for your mindset if you're a buyer. Like who wants to overpay for anything, right? Like if you're like me, I like to get things on sale as much as possible. I don't even want to pay full price, right? So no one wants to overpay. And so it's not a healthy mindset to have as a buyer to think that you're overpaying, first of all. But second of all, it's a misguided concept because here is the deal. Accurate home values are based on appraisals. Okay, so appraisals are based on the real time amount that a buyer is willing to pay for a home. So they're based on the dollar amount that a seller and a buyer are willing to come together, willing in their right mind and all of that, willing, able and ready to exchange for a home. So let's just say, for example, you had a home that let's say a year ago, a year ago in 2020, it was valued at $200,000. Well, that same home, if it now sells and appraises for $240,000, well, $240,000 is not the overpriced price tag. It's now the new value of that home. That's that new value that the owner is going to be able to enjoy, that new equity, um, and when somebody, let's say somebody comes in and pays cash 240, I'm just going to use that same, same example, 240 for a home that used to be valued at 200 and they pay cash. Now when an appraiser goes and looks at it, they're going to see, wow, somebody was ready, willing, and able to purchase that home for $240,000. That drives up the value, not only of that home, but of all the other homes in that neighborhood. So you're not overpaying, you're just moving along with the way that home values are increasing. And again, remember, value is affected by supply and demand. So that is something really good to know. When you purchase, let's say you purchase a house that was more expensive today than it was two months ago, you're not overpaying. You just happen to be purchasing with the new increased value, which then you as the homeowner are going to be able to enjoy in your equity. And it's also really good to know, with that being said, as a buyer, although prices are going up, why is this such a smart time to purchase? Well, because here's the deal. Let's say you wait. If you wait to purchase a home, let's say you see a home and you're like, you know, let's not buy it today. Let's wait two months and we'll buy it in September, for example. Well, chances are right now that if you wait to purchase that home two months from now, you're most likely going to pay more money for basically the same home that you could buy today for the price today. So sitting out and waiting is not going to serve you well if you're wanting to build wealth, if you're wanting to build equity, and if you're wanting to move up in housing. Same thing if you're thinking of selling and buying. Should you sell now and then rent? Not my personal recommendation because again, when you get ready to buy six months from now, you're probably going to pay more money for the same house that you could buy today. So I would say best advice I'd give you is if you want to sell and buy, go ahead and sell, use that equity to move up into the next home that you want to be in and continue to move forward. Um, and it's really good to know too, that even though, you know, prices are going up and how we've talked about on this video, 
the value of homes is predicted to remain strong and continue to go up and do well. And that leads us to the next part of that question, which is, are we purchasing in a housing bubble? Am I going to buy a house today that's valued at, let's say, 240 like we just said, and then next thing I know, it's valued at 140 No, we're not in a housing bubble. This is not a replay of 2008. You can rest easy on that. And let me tell you why. We're just going to do a few really quick comparisons. Let's talk about 2008. So in 2008, there were three major factors that really triggered that housing bubble. Number one was poor lending practices by mortgage companies and banks. Um, a lot of people were purchasing with adjustable rate mortgages. Number one, adjustable rates are never your friend. So they were purchasing at high adjustable rate mortgages. Part two of that is buyers were purchasing with zero equity. So they were buying a home with a super high adjustable interest rate that would fluctuate and could balloon up to a really large payment that then they could no longer afford. And they also had zero equity, which means when that price point got high and they needed to sell, now they were upside down in their house because they didn't have any equity in the, you know, they bought the house for the value that it was and that was all, they owed all the money. So there was no equity and no cushion for them to fall back on. And the third part of that is the market at that time was flooded with inventory, flooded. Building was going crazy, new construction was going bananas, and the market was flooded with inventory. And so when you mix, demand went down, lower demand, high inventory, that affected prices, right? Um, and then zero equity in homes, people not having equity, which means less security, and adjustable rate mortgages, it was a recipe for disaster. Now, let's fast forward to today. Here's the difference. Today, 2021, people are purchasing and getting financing with locked in low rate mortgages. In fact, the lowest interest rates like ever in history is right now. So that's amazing, amazing, amazing. Like it's, I mean, there's so many people that are wealthy that could buy homes with cash that are financing them because they basically feel like it's like free money because the interest rates are so low. Like that's how good it is right now with interest rates. It's amazing. So, and these are getting locked in, which means 30 years, you have that great low interest rate no matter what happens. That's amazing and ideal. Second piece of that is buyers are purchasing with strong equity. That means people are purchasing homes right now with good down payments, with significant cash to put into that home. So they're not fully financing the home, which means they have a ton of security should anything change with their situation. And number three is there is not enough inventory to support demand. So as long as that demand remains strong, which it's going to do for quite a while, meaning years, that inventory is not gonna catch up right away like that. And so you're gonna have that continued healthy, healthy market. It is so exciting. Truly, demand is projected to remain extremely strong. Like I said, inventory is not proje projected to fully catch up probably until 2023. Even as prices begin to even out and calm down, you will see a shifting in the market where buyers have more choices, price points will even out. So things are not always going to be just as bananas and crazy as they are right now but you're not going to be looking at some huge crash, some drastic price drop because that demand is going to remain strong and steady and we have much healthier lending practices in our financial industry. Thank goodness. So I hope that information helped. I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, if you have questions, just shoot us a message, comment below, DM us, send us a text at 803-230-2665. If you are ready to buy or sell or invest, or you just want to get some questions answered, we would absolutely love to help you. Um, and if you'd like to get a free home value analysis and get an idea of what your home could sell for right now, because I think you might be really surprised. Um, pleasantly surprised at what it could sell for, let us know. We can do that for you for free at no cost and would love to send that over to you. So have a great day. Looking forward to chatting with you soon and happy house selling, house buying, all the things. Have a great day. Bye.